He achieved hero status in South Australia as the first Adelaide skipper to hold aloft the AFL Premiership Cup. To be a back-to-back -back Premiership captain has assured Mark Bickley's place in football folklore. In Bix, he goes behind the scenes. He tells the stories, relives the moments. Bix, the Mark Bickley story is out on video now, along with Robert Harvey, the story so far, and Worsfold on Worsfold, the AFL Champion Series. Get your copies at these stores now. Birds of Prey, the ultimate double pack video history of Hawthorne. Rare footage, stories and interviews from the legends that made the Hawks the power club of the modern era. Toughness, success, loyalty, it's all here on Birds of Prey. Plus the critically acclaimed Year of the Dog. And Rock and Footy, the best bumps, stumps, marks and goals set to rock and roll. Three fabulous new footy videos at these stores now. Uh, Darren Jarman is the most gifted player I've ever seen. Made extremely difficult things look ridiculously easy. Pure skill, it was just a gift. Looked laconic. Whether he had to try hard or not, I don't know, but he, he just made it look too easy. Just keeps it in play, still with Jarman. Just seems to have all day left foot, looks pretty good straight through. Oh, there's no doubt, still personified. I mean, his ability to um, show unbelievable skill on both sides of his body. Dunstall, look at that, clever tap to Jarman, then did the shepherding, here's Jarman at work, almost ran too far, pulls it back to end goal. His skill, and as Dunstall has often said, his delivery of the ball, he could put it anywhere, and he could put it on the right side of a player, and that was probably the, you know, the things that we saw with Darren, of what he can actually do with the football. He's almost down the centre wing, Hawthorne go up towards half forward, all in front, good mark, plays on to Jarman, I'm going to sign here. Extremely talented and gifted player who's been able to draw crowds into AFL football because they love to come and see a player of his ability and he can walk away with his head held high because he's reached the top in AFL footy. Now Platton trying to get round the corner, kicks it hard and high, it's a floater towards so he's not playing the marker though, oh Jarvis! Oh, just a magical player, I mean his skill level is just enormous and uh, and um, I think mean, during those years at Hawthorne, I thought that his tackling was, was also uh, uh, fantastic as well. To Scholl, back to Hall, Hall in trouble, gone, stolen by Jarman, Jarman short, and fantastic skills. I believe over the period of time, he, he reached his absolute potential and utilised those skills to the best enjoyment of the rest of us and to the best of his teammates around him. Um, I just think he was probably a complete footballer. And he keeps it, he does cost up. Magnificent play. Drives into the pocket and he finds Darren Jarman. He's right on 50. Is there a bit of magic? He runs around, takes a bounce. Ron says he's going to kick a goal. He'll bring the house down. Darren Jarman, exquisite skills, uh, a lovable, a lovable uh, individual, a very passionate footballer, and he's done his family very proud. He's done his, uh, his children and his wife very proud and I just think he's been a wonderful role model for a lot, a lot of young children out there that want to be like a Darren Jarman. Finds Johnson. He's got a Jarman. Mr. Magic Scott. They trail by two points. Look at the convention centre in Adelaide. 90 plays 87. Under two minutes left. Darren Jarman. The spotlight is on him. 35 metres out, the closure in front! Early days I got drafted by Melbourne and, and uh, then Brisbane and uh, uh, Andrew got drafted as well so we went up there and had a chat and um, decided to stay home. We were taught that uh, you stay in South Australia, you represent your state, especially playing against Victoria. Well, we went up and had a look though, didn't we? We had a look and um, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it, yeah, got a bit of a suntan and... Yeah, uh, yeah no, it was, it was, it was an eye-opener because at that stage Brisbane were only yeah. just starting to set themselves up at Carrara. Yeah. So we were, we were very glad we didn't uh, actually go up there. 
you know, we knew his uh, class and uh, you know it was when I was director of football John Lawrence and myself went to Adelaide and uh, you know with his wife Sue and convinced him to come over and then we had to negotiate with his manager I think it was Griffin at that stage in Adelaide and um, then they decided to make the move. Handballs over the top to Allen and he's played pretty well as a second stringer to Johnny Platten. The long kick to the full forward line. No mark. Jarman recovers well. Spins out of trouble. Clever. Right foot snap and he puts it through. Well, the play of the night by Darren Jarman. The Hawks after a Brereton and champion. Brereton back to Jarman. Left foot is a good kick for goal. That one across the face. Dunstall. Excellent mark. Allen from 50 metres bangs at the Dunstall, who falls over, doesn't do that very often. Jarman turns around and puts it through. Playing here in Adelaide, I was always regarded as Andrew's brother, so um, I went to Melbourne to make a name for myself, and my wife Sue was, and Greg Griffin, they were instrumental in getting uh, us over there, and uh, I'm glad I did in the end. It was fantastic. Umpire calls play on as that strong Essendon defence through Considine come away. Oh, it's taken away. Oh, well played, Jarman. That was brilliant play. It might be a goal coming up to Paul Deere. He straightens up and slams it through. Brilliant play, Jarman. Well, Collins to centre wing. Paul Deere has got it. Greg Deere back to his brother Paul and the Hawks take it away. And I tell you what, I think they've got the majority of the support here tonight. Hawthorne is Jarman. Brilliant skill. Where's the lead from Dunstall? Out he comes. Magnificent football, Hawthorne. Dunstall will kick from 50. Oh, look, he came with a bit of fanfare, Charles, because he, he obviously had a reputation of being a particularly good player. He was one of those that uh, didn't look the athlete, <laughs> never looked particularly particularly fit or particularly trim, but uh, see, when you put a ball in front of him, he could go. Hawthorne get it out. A combination finishes with Anderson. He kicks into the centre to Jarman. Look at that pass off the left. Burrick has got a player wide. Tony Hall into an open goal goes Tony Hall, and he has kicked the goal. First year I struggled a bit, and... Uh, yeah, it's just playing with all the champions there, your, your, your Plattens and your Michael Tucks and Dunstalls, Brereton, Dipper and, you know, this, these blokes will just idolised when I was playing here and, uh, yeah, it took me a while to settle down and in the end, uh, the five years there was great. Centre half forward, Brereton again the target, Atkins caught going the wrong way, Jarman who loves kicking these, look at that one. Bang! When I saw the draw come out, I was very nervous I thought well here's my little brother uh, fly on the coop I've had to hold him up because she break down in tears <laughs> right her favorite her pet and uh, knowing I was playing against her pet 49,000 people at footy park a credit to the public of South Australia they give him the crows full support and here they go to open the season to open their AFL career and it's the Adelaide like Crows fans uh, had a bit of a, a bad taste in their mouth uh, I, I can recall on a number of occasions throughout the game that he was booed every time he went near the football and uh, I, I could sense that they were a little bit dirty with Darren because obviously they felt he, he made it, you know, did a backflip on his decision so uh, you weren't the nice guy but gee haven't things changed now they desperately want a couple of quick goals they may get one here through a fold of at Negri Dunstall gets the hand pass away Allen's kick is high, in towards the square, and a fine mark and goal by Jarman. Kick across his body, up towards half forward, running underneath it was Deer, but he gathers it nicely. His recovery was good. Kick into the pocket, here's an opportunity for Hawthorne. Jarman, that's Darren, oh. clever. Kicks a goal by the look of it, it is a goal. He was pretty shy. And I think, look, really, even though he was about 23 or 24 when he came, I think when you move into a new environment, you do tend to be shy anyway. But Darren really was just one that wanted to enjoy his footy. And obviously being his first crack at, at league football, he made the most of it and uh, ended up playing in two premierships in that one year, both day and night. So he's, he was quiet. He, he enjoyed the footy side of things. He could have a, a good laugh with everybody. And uh, being captain, obviously, Obviously, what, what I was doing in those days was being on the match committee. You always took a little bit more interest in uh, in guys who uh, you saw perform at a high level, and Darren did that. Here against John, comes to Condon. Oh, lightning, Anderson, away to Jarman. Jarman kicks a goal. 
Here's to the half forward line, Jarman, no one near him for 40 metres. A casual bounce now. He kicks to the square and Dunstall over the back plate and another goal to the Hawks. Eight minutes left, wind assisted time for the Swans in this quarter. Dunstall, Jarman, oh, gets beat the ball cleverly. Is it a goal? Top goal. Well, here's Jarman. Oh, cleverly. McDonald, another one coming up to the Hawks. Morrissey, a tap in, beautiful. Collins, oh, Anderson, and he's got a man getting loose. Well, Collins kept going. Now the loose man takes it. Jarman, great skills. Darren Jarman, the goal. Left or right foot, doesn't matter. Lambert, lying on top of it, grabbed by Ben Allen. We just spoke of him, the short pass is on. Dunstall out in front. Tap to Jarman. Jarman hooks it around. And Darren Jarman, the South Australian, has popped it through for a goal. To Lawrence. Anderson. Oh, good backup support at half forward by Gowers. Gowers looking for Paul Deere over the back. He races in after it. Still going Paul Deere. Good play by the half forward. Goes back to Jarman. Jarman straightens up from 20 metres. Bang. Has he kicked it? I think he has. Puts Gray lifting. On the bounce, an awkward one for Cullen. He might have given this away. Jarman scoops it up. Goes for the goal. You know, he put him in that leg and uh, he's, he's just the sort of bloke who, he just does some unbelievable things which no one really sees. You know, his tackling was good, uh, his, his kicking was just, just, just great. To Allen and Hudson, Allen traps it, hand pass on, Jarman an open goal, beautiful play by Hawthorne, Jarman slams it through for another one. The North Hobart Oval, Steve, as you know, is probably a fairly small ground and really what he did that particular day just stamped him full of class and uh, actually I think that day, if I remember correctly, I was actually playing in the centre and uh, really Darren was just on fire and of course to come away from that game and really the whole the whole group played very well that day. I think they kicked in excess of 30 goals and really you could then see that uh, Darren had a, a big future at AFL level. Leads come in from everywhere. Yes, won't make the distance. Not a bad effort though. Right to the goal square. Oh, the mark! Excellent mark by Jarman. Robertson tries to get clear. That was nearly a throw. Platten tries to handball it out wider. Robren, skillful, 50 metres from goal. Hooks it to the uh, front of the goals. Back there. Anthony Gunner. Jarman, brilliant football. Christian takes the mark. Playing on deer. Back to Barwin. Oh, it's blocked the hand pass. Jarman! He's almost down the centre wing. Hawthorne go up towards half forward. All in front. Good mark. Plays on to Jarman. Ominous signs here. It's Gary Ayres out in front. Takes the mark. Was well played by North Melbourne there by Chandler, but Allen able to get it back and then centre it. Jarman at the back. Felt he might have interfered. Then the left foot by Jarman. And he put it through. It's a genius, this man. Hudson hits that ball at 100 miles an hour. His left foot a beautiful. <laughs> he might have been too quick for Dunstan. Jarman dodging, weaving. That's his specialty. What a goal! Lawrence off to Anderson. A floating kick down towards Hudson. It clean bowls him. Dunstall wants Jarman. He's got him. Jarman shoots in towards goal and has put the first one on the board for the Hawks. Well done by Morrissey, but straight to Waterman. Well done by Morrissey again, working hard, alone in that pack. Out to Jarman from 40 metres. Jarman shoots it towards goal and pops it through. And now he's caught. Does get rid of the football towards Turley. With him is Barrett. Where is Barrett? Barrett. He's hurt himself. The knee, I think, as that shot by... Obviously losing Dermy early in the first half, and then I think Jason kicked a few, so... Um, yeah, it was, it was a tough game, and uh, to get over the line was great. and boosted our confidence enormously. Morris, long and low, up towards Jarman. Worst ball went too early, and it could be costly. Jarman's away, 35 metres out. He shoots in towards goal and has put it through. It was 91, um, I was standing Guy McKenna, and he, he's an absolute champion player, and uh, I was playing uh, forward pocket, and especially in the Hawthorne side, it, 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 the pockets seemed to struggle because, you know, we always look for Jason on the lead and because he's such a great player. And uh, I remember, you know, on the bench, I was sat there on the bench and Tony Hall was next to me and he was in the other forward pocket. So, yeah, it was it was hard to hard position to play at Hawthorne at the time. Touched off the boot, McKenna sits and waits. Hudson, 
the handball to Morrissey. Left foot, he can kick this. He has put it through. Collins comes to meet it now, 60 metres out from goal. Dunstall has the drop, he goes back in front, Brennan's fallen over. Dunstall deep in the pocket, measures the options, pulls it back, it's a goal! Oh, what a classic! That really fired me up and I remember, you know, leading up to the finals with Adelaide that I had uh, people in Melbourne saying that I was no good in big games and uh, I'll tell you, it really put a bit of, you know, fire in my belly and uh, I said, next time I play in a final, I'm going to make sure I do something. A was his fitness that had to be worked on continually, and um, his defensive side of his game, particularly when he was playing half forward in you know in '91 a lot of the times and interchanging out of the centre, and uh, that was the area that really that we had to work on, and which we did over the you know the next couple of years, and um, you know he's you know the both sides of his game, defence and his attacking side, that was never questionable, but his work ethic, uh, once the ball wasn't in his possession was the area that he really had to work through. Number 11, Darren Jarman. I actually recall the day sort of uh, he came up at the end of it all and he, and he was flat as and I'm, and I'm sort of thinking hang on we've just won a premiership why is this guy not over the moon and he was just so disappointed with his own performance and, and I know he spent a bit of time on the bench that day and that's you know he has so much pride in his game that's not what he wanted to do but as I tried to explain to him look he was one of the reasons we got there I mean you can't be the best player every week but he certainly did it enough for us during the year to, to make sure that we were there on that final Saturday. The earliest were when we saw him around 14, 15 years of age and um, look, the, he's not the easiest man to talk to at that age. He was very much an introvert, uh, a young boy who I guess uh, had a bit of confidence himself but uh, wouldn't express that uh, in any sort of crowd and he took a lot of coaxing to get him to play football. Michael Noonan, yeah, he was um, absolutely sensational early days for me. Uh, I went to North Adelaide as a um, 17 year old and uh, played a year in under 17s and then uh, Michael Noonan invited me out to uh, do pre-season in uh, North Adelaide and I think that was 85 and uh, yeah I forgot to turn up training and uh, he found me and uh, gave me a kick up the bum and uh, from that day onwards I don't reckon I've ever missed a training session so I think it was a uh, the, the push I needed and um, he taught me basically where to kick the ball and all my skills and yeah, he was a big influence on my career. It sort of culminated, you could see the development occurring all the time and his enjoyment of the sort of football we played and uh, even though we were a little disappointed in those first two finals in 87 he sort of brought just about, it was sort of the coming of age of Darren Jarman. First movement is usually the best one but he got away with it. A long kick West will go for the thump again. John Roberts in front. Three goes Darren Jarman. Can he kick another one? What a great goal, Darren Jarman. His second. I remember the first quarter, the first 15, 20 minutes when you grabbed that ball on the boundary line and he kicked the left foot 50 out on one of the hardest pockets of Footy Park. And I knew then we were going to win the game. It was some, some of the best. Oh, I've never seen a kick like that before. I know Gary Ablett's done some marvellous things, but that's right up there with Darren's uh, kick for goal. That set the scene for us to win that one. Jarman's got a gallop. Salisbury's going to beat him there. Jarman well played. Jarman now a chance to set it up. Kick number four going in long. Parsons there. Cruise up early. Parsons provides the shepherd. Well, that's a hard one. Up goes Darren Jarman. Around the line. Puts it on its way. There's still a fight. Going to the goal. Oh, what an unbelievable kick. Darren Jarman. It's still today, I reckon it was the best goal I've ever kicked in my life. I think I went on record very early uh, when you saw them play and uh, I was fortunate to be very close to both of them that uh, I, I called Andrew special and I called Darren special special. Uh, there was just no other words to describe the particular skills they had. Andrew was very good with the hands and quite good with the feet but, but Fudd or Darren as we know him, he, uh, he just had all the complete skills. He could mark, he could kick, and he can do anything over 60 metres or as short as uh, you know, a weighted kick over 10 or 15. So he was just, as I said, special, special. No, but Darren, we have got a good number, haven't we? Yeah, obviously, um, I still remember our junior days. Um, yeah. Mum used to take us to training every, uh, every twice, a week. twice a week. Oh, yeah. and, you know, if it wasn't for her dedication in the early days, um, we probably wouldn't be where we are today. How many cars did Mum go through? 
Oh, God, I can remember about 20. Um, <laughs> In one year. Yeah, I still remember that one where we uh, were on our way to training and uh, there was one of Will Morris Minor, I think it was. And oh, that one. We tried to get up the hill and uh, we were going backwards, so we were a bit late for training that night and we were a bit, pretty buggered pushing the car. Remember yeah, but that? what about the time I dropped you off? Oh, well, I didn't drop you off at Geyser. You were a bit older then. I did drop you off. And I went and turned around the corner and the uh, gear back, gearbox fell off. The motor fell out, yeah. The gearbox fell yeah. out in the middle of me North East Road. So that wasn't a very good one. Try and hit the pole. Come on, getting closer. We uh, made an effort to every night to go out there and have at least a half hour to an hour of, of kicking because uh, we were always taught that uh, skill always wins games of football, not tactics. And that was a big part of our, uh, of our development as young footballers. And uh, that pole is still there. And matter of fact, Darren and I might go and uh, paint it and sign it one day and just uh, yeah, a little uh, momentum for the uh, Holden Hill area. Well, I reckon we've smashed that light about... Yeah, the street light. Times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always dark corner now. There's <laughs> Mum no light. can get the bloody bill from the council. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Oh, we are um, very competitive, and you've got to understand that being the older brother in any any family, you've got to uh, you've got to carry the flag. And because this young man, he had a, a lot of natural talent. Uh, playing cricket with a tennis ball on a cement pitch, I couldn't get him out, so I got a golf ball to get him out and knock him block off. Things like that. Dirty tactics. <laughs> Dick Dastley would be proud of me. And uh, Muttley. Yeah, he always cheated. <laughs> yeah, that's how I could beat him. In towards full forward. No mark taken. Jarman doing the scouting and he will go. But the Hawthorne machine rolls on. Jarman takes and he's got a panic. Two bounces towards full forward. The kick, beautiful for Hudson. You remember the 92 night flag? Yeah, it was a good night actually at Waverley and uh, um, I think they got about 50, 60,000 there so as you said, everyone was going there to barrack for uh, Fitzroy and um, yeah, that, that was a good game and uh, the, the second half we just got on top and uh, yeah, to kick some goals in that game was nice. Jenkins left foot kick is very, very good. Gives Jarman a bit of space. And what a creative player Jarman is. He runs away from Burke. There's some confidence for you. And the kick towards Dunstall's not bad. And Dunstall's got it. Just beautifully controlled kick by Jarman. Well, he may have taken the eyes off it slightly, Sandy. Great pressure, pressure, though. Hawking gets it down towards the centre line. Jarman has called a play on. He's caught the long players flat-footed. And this could result in a goal. It has. Langford's kick in is straight up the ground. Hawthorne mark taken by Madigan. Away they go. Cooper onto Jarman. Jarman looks upfield and delivers it with precision. It's a kick, isn't it? Magnificent kick on the run by Jarman. I've been spoiled. I've had some really good players kick the ball to me over the years. Uh, the Bacchanaras, the Plattens, the Pritchards, all these sort of guys that can, I mean, really deliver the ball. And they're at the top of delivering the ball. And then there's Jars. I mean, he's just... Uh, the thing with Jars is he could do it on either side of the body, and it looked totally... You, you couldn't tell if he was a left or a right footer. And you could lead in heavy traffic. You could point to where you wanted the ball, and you wouldn't break stride, and there it would be. And I, honestly... I did it used to grin sometimes, I used to almost break into laugh when I'd lead to jars because I just felt sorry for the bloke that was behind you because if he was behind, he had no chance of touching the ball. Short pass, Jarman, uplifted by Gale. Time running out, 35 seconds. Kicked by Jarman, not still marks. I don't think there was any one position for Darren. I think, um, you know, he, he was half forward, he's played a lot at full forward. His biggest strength is, is, is a one-on-one -on -one situation. He's very, very skillful. Uh, in any position, uh, you know, really, uh, from probably the centre line down, uh, in beating an opponent. He is very, very clever, and uh, he really just knows what to do uh, when the football's in his area. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorise him into one specific area, really. Hawthorne, you'd expect them to charge hard, and they're going to do just that. Thompson, Lawrence, Ornley, a beauty. Jarman, clever. Right foot, bang, goal, what a player. Up towards Hudson. 
playing from behind and he gets a favourable bounce. Sweeps it further forward with a penetrating hand pass. Jarman from 25 metres has kicked another one. Got to give a little ground. Have a look up forward. What's he got? Jarman. One of the best players on the ground. Ben Allen, a magnificent kick. Dunstall couldn't trap it, but it's a loose ball, Jarvin. Oh, look at that. He walked around and said, thank you very much for a goal. Taylor playing in front, taps it on brilliantly. Hudson went without it. Off the ground will allow Jarman. Here's danger. Darren Jarman on the left foot. Picks it up with class. Brilliant play, Jarman. Tap down Hall. Platten. Danger here because Jarman races in. Oh, look at that for play. Brilliant play, Jarman to Dunstall for a goal. It's fantastic. Dunstall out from full forward. Taps for Anderson. He goes over the top. Pritchard, a great hand pass to Jarman. Jarman runs into an open goal and from eight metres kicks it. The Hawks are off and running. Well done by Hudson. He gets it further field to Anderson. On to Darren Jarman. An open goal looms. Darren Jarman kicks and Darren Jarman's kicked a magnificent goal. Now through comes Collins, ducking and weaving. Finds some space for himself and kicks it out to the wing. Hi! Oh, what a mark! Mark of the day, Darren Jarman being a little bit more mature than, than some of the kids that were recruited to the club you could see that he had that SANFL experience behind him and really he was just a player who was going to finish off a team that was capable of playing some extremely good football and uh, Darren being a half forward flanker forward pocket and he could obviously have a spell in the middle as well his versatility was also pretty important look at this view across to Jarman he's 55 out there's another one. It's too easy. Backing up, excellent. Platten nearly made it for himself. In chips for Cray. Oh, oh, look at this. An absolute marvel. And he kicks the goal. Don't say any more. Ben Allen, a quick kick. Down towards the 50 metre line. The race is on. Jarman. I wonder if he'll have a shot. Dunstall goes to ground. He kicks another one. The man is brilliant. A tap out by Vic Vitovic. Taken by Gowers around the corner and Jarman in everything early in this match. Essendon had a bout of the fumbles all day. Kicks the ball under pressure. The punch from behind was Mill. It was good play. Puts Jarman into space. The dangerous Jarman has a look at the goals. Round the corner. What a goal. Now Jarman always seems to have a ton of time. Dodging, weaving, class. Darren Jarman kicks the ball 70 metres. Dunstall at the back. Yes. Oh. Only as far as Jarman, fairly good kick. Jarman decides to have a trot in the park. He'll be looking for Dunstall. Kicks the ball across his body. Superb play, to Jarman. Good control. Danaher couldn't control the ball. But Taylor can. The youngster gets it onto Jarman. He decides to have a run. He looks for Dunstall and finds him with a classical left foot spearing pass. Fraser will keep his eye on the ball. But what an excellent mark by Darren Jarman. Jarman finds space and there's a player all by himself in Dunstall who in turn chips it across to Hudson and through it goes to Hawthorne 11. He kicks it out, Jarman versus Leeds. Jarman will end up with this danger here for Richmond. He can have a bounce, he should go again, he does. Will he go again? No, he brings it into Dunstall. Have a look at that for a kick. Oh, that is champagne football by Jarman. Bounce in the pocket then, not too high. Paul Deere got it down, Condon did well, Jarman from about 40 metres out, snaps and goals. I suppose I remember a day when we, we, we beat uh, uh, West Coast Seagulls over in Perth and, we, and we, we, we flew back the next day and the blokes were, we were pretty tired and uh, we finished that going out to uh, one of the, the nightclubs in Melbourne and, and he, was, he was on fire you know, and, but uh, I think it was about 2 o'clock in the morning and um, all the boys were roaring and having a good time and there's Jars sitting in, in a chair fast asleep with a crown lager in, in his hand and it's only one bloke I know who falls asleep at a noisy uh, nightclub and that was Jars. Zigzag football back outside the centre corridor to Jarman. Jarman a short pass to Dunstall. This is Allen, left half forward, good kick to Gowers into open space. Well, if you've got that time, you can't waste it coming out. They've been caught badly on the rebound. Jarman. And he's not a good deliverer of the footy anyway. Here's Jarman, 15 metres out goal. Darren Baxter, 
to the half forward line. Tony Hall, great mark with strength. She's been awful and best player by a mile. On to Jarman. Jarman to Dunstall. Dunstall on the lead. Can he get there? He can. Good to see Ronnie back in the side. McEwen to the half back line. Greg Deer the punch. Tony Hall taps it down to Platten. They're trying to steamroll their way through. On to Jarman. Jarman on the left foot. Very casual, but he chips it in for a goal right through the middle. A real Adelaide Crow combination there. High one to half forward. Warswold goes. He's got the job on Platten, who's in sparkling form. It puts great kick towards the square. Here's Jarman to get back. Running in to go for goal and kicks it. Bickley marks, plays on, and then thumps it in towards the half forward region. Kernahan got his hands onto it, but Langford was there. He's smothering Stephen Kernahan effectively so far. Darren Jarman, what a kick! Oh. 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 It's a nice long kick into the square. It's taken, it's a goal to Darren Jarman. So Darren Jarman kicks his second goal. Hannah, an effective spoil. Wangani could have been held. Advantage paid, he was, says the umpire. So Jarman hammers it away from centre half back. Goes towards his brother. He's got a chance, it sits beautifully. Jarman from 25 metres will pull it through, and South Australia hits the front. Playing against your brother in those, in those early days, did you, did you rise a cog when you knew you'd be playing on him? Mm, I remember one day at, at Waverley, we we'll, I think they knocked us off at the end. Um, I was standing Andrew in the middle and I was going okay and the next minute I was on the ground and I had this big mud thing in my face and I was got whacked behind the head and I sort of got up and I was groggy and little Ray Jenky walking past me and saying so, I said to him, Who the hell was that? And he said, See that bald turd walking down the road there? And that's him. And it was Andrew and I looked up and he just turned around and gave me a smile and got me. <laughs> Mentally, it was probably one of the hardest gigs to go against. I stood some of the best going around, the, you know, in the country in those days. But he was always a challenge. But I knew what areas to, what buttons to press, and uh, he got a few little jabs in the ribs every now and then. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier before. Uh, I was getting on top of you one game at, at Waverley, and you threw that mud in my face and give me a clip behind the ear, and hey, that's right. But it was, yeah, it was great to rivalry to play against Andrew. But yeah, it was even better to come back and. Uh, uh, play at the highest level with you. It would be Joyce's final year with the club. I had to be involved twice at the club you know, and to win two premierships, I uh, really enjoyed it. But I, I think, you know, people ask me, you know, the highlights of, you know, of, of those two things, it's probably more the people. Very honest man and very passionate and, uh, yeah, he used to get us fired up for the game, which was uh, something that I usually need. Back to the club as senior coach came Peter Knights, but he would face one of the toughest tenures of any Hawthorne coach. At Hawthorne, uh, I guess when I first went there, yeah sure he was a pretty versatile sort of a player that could play either end, midfield, but there weren't too many players that had the, the skill level that he had. So there was no doubt at a time where we had a lot of players that were nearing the end of their career and were starting to rebuild and young players were looking for some guidance for some leadership, someone to follow, we really needed Darren to step up and take over some of that leadership role. Not only leadership on the field, on the training track, but just the way in which, in which he went about his, his business. He was, he was such a pro, the way in which he took so much pride in his skill level. Jarman through the middle. Oh, lightning. Wouldn't you like to be on the end of that? Hudson. The ball flat. Tried to get it to Baxter, but in chips Jarman. And Jarman's kick. In towards full forward, right oh, oh, Dunstall, oh, he stood up well. Taps it back, Crawford, pretty good today Crawford. Lovely kick to Jarman, usually doesn't waste one. Dunstall, oh, good for him. <laughs> Lovely to watch. He was just a champion, like, you, you come flying out the middle and, and ten times out of ten, he'd be ten metres in front of his full back and it was just... He was just such a great reader, you know, timing to the lead was unbelievable and all you had to do was just put it out in front of him and like most times you make your kick look better, um, you might give him a bad kick but he had the pace and his strength to get there and it was just a pleasure to pass it to him, it was, he was always there, he was always a target for me. 
It was really a, a time where the club was rebuilding and, and there's no doubt about that. It was a time where some of our great players were nearing the end of their career. And when you're nearing the end of your career, you shouldn't be the, the catalyst. You shouldn't have to be the, the match winner. You should be able to be the cream on the cake. And we just had no players that could take over that mantle to be a match winner as such because we were at the other end of the scale, we were developing so many young players. That was a time where the likes of you know, Raiden Tallis and Angelo Leckis and, and Ben Dixon and, uh, and almost Jade Rawlings, uh, some of these guys, Shane Crawford, Nick Holland, Mark Graham, they were boys that were starting off that became and have become household names at Hawthorne, but they were just developing. But we had no one in the middle there that could really take ownership from the Dunstalls, from the Platins. They shouldn't have to be still the match winners. And it was just at a time where we were rebuilding and the other end of the scale players were going out but it was fortunate that Darren Jarman was really in the twilight of his career at that stage and, and we just used him in the middle of the ground he, he won the best and fairest in 95 by a street Hunter tagged him out of the match and they played Footscray and Hawthorne lost that of course uh, Jarman that was one of his holiday games Collins to Jarman He'll have to go. He's got to beat two of them. He gets a nice bounce. He needs a good hand pass. He's got one. On the run is Jarman, who certainly made a difference to Hawthorne's midfield after serving two weeks suspension. Still he goes, Jarman. Still he goes, Jarman. Bergen turned to Pegger, just about St Kilda's best player. Jarman tried to clean him up. Hand pass to McDonald. Sits in front of Jarman. He'll go for goal. One bounce. Onto the left foot. Bang he goes and puts it through. Great. 95 was definitely Jar's best year. He just uh, he destroyed the competition. He was brilliant. Played a lot of the time on the ball, and and Jar sometimes had a problem if he didn't get on ball and he had to sit on a half forward flank, and he got tagged by a particularly good defender. He had trouble getting into the ball, into the game. But once he got on the ball, I mean, he just cut loose. And 95 he virtually played on ball all year, and he just destroyed the opposition. I mean, he uh, he won the best and fairest pretty easily. I think he was runner up in the Brownlow. Probably. Uh, probably would have been entitled to win it with the season he had. Unfortunately, we didn't have as good a year as the team, which probably didn't help him. Um, he just, he would get 30, 35 touches every week, which most good on ballers do when they're, when they're in form. But his possessions are different to most others. I mean, if he wasn't kicking goals, he was setting them up, and he was just doing some amazing things. Away go the Hawks again. Jane Crawford through the cricket pitch area. Barnes can't reach him. Up the ground is Langford to Shepherd. Off to Jarman, who's been quiet, but his kick for goal is good. Great start to the Hawks. Plays on quickly out to Barnes, who's been mentioned, seems to be by himself all the time. Over to Hall, who offers the run to Scholl. Back to Hall. Hall in trouble. Gone. Stolen by Jarman. Jarman short. And fantastic skills of Darren Jarman. Cummings, there was a free kick in that passage of play, but the advantage with the Essendon. Great smother, Jarman. Jarman into an open goal. Put out your glasses. The Hawks have got their second. That's probably the best year I've ever played, no question. Um, probably more ki consistent than anything. It was just, um, it was a real consistent year. And uh, yeah, I just loved, as I said before, I was getting a bit older, so I was one of the, the leaders out there now. And um, it was just, yeah, the pressure was on to, to perform every week. A hand pass worth about 15 metres. Over the ball is Woods, he's playing. Concedes some ground, gets it across to Jarman. Oh. Brilliant get. <laughs> Mitten kind of on the lead, how was the kick? Centering kick up towards half forward, and the timely mark is taken by Alex McDonald. He wants to get on with it quickly. It's effective, Jarman is usually deadly accurate. He should go from there, and he does. The kick over his head, now he's fumbled, now he's got problems. Waiting for a knighthood there, down on one knee, the hand is taken away by Jarman. Jarman bouncing up towards the middle of third down. In a quarter where scoring hasn't been easy. Oh, oh, look at that. Just the perfect steal. He made Ronald Biggs look like an amateur then. Looks like Hudson. Yes, he's not going to take the kick. We'll keep an eye on him. Hudson kicks down towards half forward. Taylor couldn't take it. Crawford gets a hand pass to Jarman. Here's the first one. Jarman has gold. I'd loved him to have stayed. And of all people, I wanted him to stay more than anyone else because I knew how important he was. But he was an Adelaide boy, a hometown boy. His wife Sue was from there. They had family there. They had kids. It, it was just all right for him to go home and, and get back into that atmosphere. And obviously, I mean, Adelaide would have been silly not to move heaven and earth to get him there. He played in the premiership side at Hawthorne. He then won a best and fairest or a club champion. 
he was pretty, pretty close to his family. I mean, he was really a, a family man. And I think it was both he and Sue that really wanted to head back home to Adelaide. And it was at a time as well where things were really happening in football with the AFL and the, uh, the Adelaide Crows. And I suppose he saw that as a natural extension of his development, that he had to come to Melbourne, and it was Hawthorne that he came to, to learn the caper, to serve his apprenticeship, and, and make an impression in VFL and at Hawthorne, which he certainly did. And once he got to that stage, he just about achieved it all, but had always had the ambition to finish off his football back in Adelaide. The, the only pressure that came would have been from me, because I knew that my time was coming up, mm. and I felt that Darren obviously had another one or two more years knowing when I was going to move on. And I just wanted to have at least a year with him uh, in, in, the AFL, uh, in the AFL competition together. So we can actually look back in 10, 15 years time and say, well, look, we had a year in 96, wasn't a pleasant year under Robert Shaw, but uh, at least we, we played some sort of footy together. Can he keep it? He does. Costa, magnificent play. Drives into the pocket and he finds Darren Jarman. He's right on 50. Is there a bit of magic? He runs around, takes a bounce. Runs in, he's got to kick a goal. He'll bring the house down to the head. Nice to finish tonight with a highlight. In towards full forward, towards Jarman. Look at that kick. Superb stuff. Darren Jarman to boot his second. And as Malcolm said, his side's 20th. 20. 25 metres out. He has finished in a blaze of glory with the 20th goal of the night. Andrew McLeod was very good early. He was probably a bit overweight, just a little fraction, and uh, he had a super pre-season, and uh, you could tell uh, he, he could read the game. His skills were second to none, and, and uh, as you said, he was only a young kid, but you could just tell he was going to be a superstar. Now goes out wide and oh. picks out McLeod beautifully. Off to Darren Jarman. Oh. Darren Jarman kicks and it's got their 19. He's a centreman, ruck rover type for Hawthorne, but this is where he hurt you. Gee, the breeze help. Odds was uh, huge over here. He's you know, equal to Don Bradman. That's how big he was. And uh, yeah, he was uh, doing the job. He kicked 100 goals a couple of times. and. He, um, I think in 97 he did his knee and uh, that was pretty shattering for him and uh, yeah he was a uh, terrific fellow. The lead is 13 points, a goal will be very handy. After the siren, he's got it! Kennedy's gone on to Robin but it's gone over their head, Robin does well on the ground, Vardy the youngster kicks back into Jarman, oh this is where it's easy for him. Oh, look out. Put it down. Yeah, there's another one. Make it five. After months of speculation, Shaw made his decision after another disappointing season. There are some personal reasons, I guess, uh, and some factors that have, have influenced his decision. Shaw's two-year stint in Adelaide has been a tumultuous period, both on and off the field. The Crows' decision to appoint a non-South Australian as coach has been a failure, with Shaw offering his resignation earlier this season after his family was the target of abuse. Under Shaw, the Crows managed only 11th last year, and this year, despite a big recruiting drive which netted Hawthorne's Darren Jarman, the club has again missed a finals berth. The circumstances of the season sort of haven't, unfortunately, uh, given us the results we would have uh, wanted. The hunt is now on for a new coach with South Australia's favourite son and Channel 7 commentator Malcolm Blight, the favourite. Other possibilities include Neil Baum, Lee Matthews and Mick Noonan. Football's worst kept secret came into the open today when Blight was officially installed as the Crows' third coach. I felt something was going to occur but I, I didn't uh, look, it was brutal, um, and, and obviously everyone goes through it, but the fact is that I was disappointed that Malcolm actually didn't sit me down and explain to me why I was delisted as a senior player of the uh, football club. And you know, John Reid did the, did the uh, dirty work in that regard, so you've got to live with that, and, and that's probably how Malcolm approaches his football. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to uh, let the water go under the bridge. So. In some ways there was some writing on the wall because a lot of us senior players were trying to pick up the pieces uh, in regards to that year in 96. So, but at the end of the day, uh, he made the right decision because 97, 98, they won two flags. So, Brighty's got the runs on the board. 
At the club champions dinner there would be further farewells. New skipper Mark Bickley on stage to farewell his two predecessors. Tony and Chris have both been captains of this football club. They've been honoured as club champions and they've been selected as All-Australians. What they are on top of that is friends. And friends don't forget friends. And Chris and Tony, we don't intend to forget you. Thank you. Malcolm would just, yeah, he sort of rocked up and just went punch and uh, Tony McGuinness, Chris McDermott, Andrew Jarman, just out and it was just, everyone was in shock and just, uh, I think he, from there, uh, everyone was on the back foot and he was pretty uh, scathing early and uh, towards the middle of the year he sort of just opened up and was teaching the boys basics of the game and uh, obviously uh, we responded. Throw in centre wing, Pittman beats Wind, a fumble by Wirra, he left it for Bickley. A centering kick by Mark Bickley, Jarman's moved to the forward line and takes a mark, 35 metres out right in front. Adelaide fans will tell the story. Goal! Once it played advantage. Well, it didn't really work to advantage, surely it had to come back. Here's Robert. Gives it off to Jarman, who fires a goal, and it's a goal. Great signs for the Crows. They always seem to have a player in support, and Johnson's kick there has been marked by Costa. Costa prominent. Possession number six. Kicks into the full forward line, and Darren Jarman has taken the mark about 30 metres out on a 45-degree angle. Saw him last week against the Bombers miss a couple of uh, what looked like straightforward shots, but uh, we'll watch that. this with interest, but he put it straight through. I've just felt comfortable being there, and uh, he was teaching everyone how to play, and uh, our skills were up, and yeah, it was just nice to be out there. He was attacking. He's always safe. You know, if you kick 22 and they kick 21, we win. So, and that was the way we were playing. We were a very attacking side, and... Uh, uh, that was just a uh, joy to play, sides like that. Rashuda now on the move, and look at Darren Jarman. He's kicked a couple. What about this one? Just turns Ruse inside out. What football by Jarman! Tregenza dragged to the ground. James, you're going to get into strife too. Just able to get his left foot to it. Barty goes back to Jarman. Put it down. Put it absolutely down to Darren Jarman to himself, well he's fallen over and there's two of us and I've got it. Next he says, oops. Here's Jarman, spins out of trouble. Jarman bends it back. He's got many times. McKenna, here's a chance for the Crows. Vardy over the top, they've got a player on, it's Darren Jarman. He doesn't miss these. And he didn't. As everyone knows, once there's a ball out on a movement, once he gets it, he's got one on one. He, uh, he's very, very, very difficult to beat. Under pressure, Ryan thrown off the ball. Great pick up by Jarman. Maybe a bit of magic. And football park. Jarman has made it through. He's got five kicks and three of them have been threes. But what they'll be talking about tomorrow is the marking cook. Jarman, can he make it seven? Oh, he has! He can do no wrong! And Richard Osmond on the last line of defence draws the player. He gives a hand pass away. Intercepted. Marty has lost it. Richard was only going to Jarman. Short to Modra, too much carry on the ball, there's another push in the back, not played, Jarman quick snap, he's got it. On that occasion, Bombers defending desperately, they haven't got the numbers here, but Danaher comes in, overruns the footy, Jarman loves these snaps. He looks pretty good, I think he's kicked his second, he had. There's plenty filling the hole in front. Modra did well. St Kilda had booked a berth in the grand final, and only the foolhardy would have suggested their opponents would have been any other than the Western Bulldogs. 70,000 came to the MCG on that Saturday in September and saw the Crows blow the opening quarter with seven straight behinds. Tony Modra would be helped from the field at the 20 minute mark. The cruciate ligament in his good knee gone. His season over. I think it's his left knee. This is a tragedy now for Adelaide with Modra, that high flyer. Half time, we just, we were all walking off and we were shattered. We were, you know, 30 something points down, and you looked over to see the Bulldogs walking off, and they were 
real chirpy and hugging each other and yeah it was just a complete different feeling. We got in the rooms and everything was quiet and then I thought um, Malcolm would go off uh, and uh, took us in the coach's room and he was really calm and said well we're playing crap let's go out there and go out and enjoy the next half and see what we can do and just you could see the confidence growing in the players because I, I think they all expected to get a ton lashing and but to be the calm Malcolm was what we didn't expect and then we went out there and we overran the Bulldogs which was probably I reckon one of the, the greatest games that I've played in. So this for his 200th career goal and his second for the day but more importantly to keep the Crows in touch to give them some faint hope. Free kick to McLeod, open down the centre corridor for Bickley, he goes long, Jarman's at full forward, he jumps and goes! Oh! And miss kicks can sap the energy of the players up field too. Wren sets himself in front, knocked on by Wine, taken by Bickley, wonderful handball to Connell, on the edge of the centre square, Jarman again is the target, couldn't take it, he looked like he might have been held, no free kick, chance for Smart, to fumble, he's got it, Smart, kicks a goal, here come the Crows! They know there's no tomorrow, there's just 10 points in it. Sean Red tries to get a mighty belt at it, but it's picked up by Scotty West. Spirals it high to the outer side. Tyson Edwards gives chase. First to the ball. Next goal. Put aside the fate of this game. Matty Connell's got a chance to run. And run. And run he does. Into the diamond. He's inside 50. Goes short. Popping it up towards Goodwin. He's on the left foot too. Yeah. He'll be kicking with his left foot in at the goal. Simon Goodwin. In just his ninth senior game with the Crows. Kipperman's up in glory, and he has. And they've just in fact, that's Goodwin. They're starting to win the one-on-one -on -one battles, KB. So Goodwin's got it on centre wing. Goes short. Finds Johnson. He's got it, Jarman. Mr. Magic's got it. They trail by two points. Look at the convention centre in Adelaide. 90 plays 87, <laughs> under two minutes left. Darren Jarman, the spotlight is on him. 35 metres out, the Crows are in front. It's looking like the Crows, they lead by two points. What a turn up after a 31 point margin at half time. Crows were goalless in the first term. Bulldogs have been goalless in the last. Scott West again. It drops short. Edwards gets back there. The hand pass away. Jamison. Simon. Crows are in the grand final. Oh, look at them. They've gone mad at football park. And the players. Well, look at Liver. Bubba Smith cannot believe it. There's been so much written and so much said. But the reality is, the dogs have missed out. Malcolm Blake and his men are through. We, we sort of went over there where the pressure was more on St Kilda because, you know, they were representing Melbourne and uh, uh, we just went over there with the attitude, well, you know, let's go and enjoy it. I was at Greg Anderson's house and we were watching the grand final and half time I'm thinking the Crows are a chance here and then he's exploded. I'm thinking, hang on, what's going on? This is, am I watching the right game? I'm trying to, <laughs> have I drank too much? <laughs> and I've got to say it a bit of a tear. Costa had a look down obligingly for him. He's paddling it out towards the boundary. 55 metres out, Jarman. Jarman is 20 metres out. 83 plays 74. Jarman, beside in front, 10 
quite accurately. A clinical finish. He's got three. Just things that you thought someday, somewhere, if, I can, if we can do it as a bit of a surprise factor, rather than do it as a constant factor, it might help us. And on the day, Darren was just sensational in that last quarter. And once again, the game opened up, and we got a lot of good ball to him. You know, we got a lot of clean ball, and him one out, and the ball on his side, he's always going to be a danger. Oh, Robert in front. Harvey gives it away to Burke. Robert and Whiteley back towards Jarman. Jarman, yes. Either way now, the dream has only just over 11 minutes to run. There's Brown, Zilla unloads, Quinmar's in front, Wren playing his heart out, in from the side, feeds it wide, great chipping off the ball, put some space for Allen, alongside the centre circle, unloads, smart, from behind, up the goal, five to the half, German. last 10 minutes was so long I just wanted the siren to go and uh, yeah it was fantastic so there's nothing left now but to celebrate Yeah, we flew back with the cup uh, the next morning. I think Rod Jamison had it out the, the window. In brighter than expected weather, the cavalcade of cars crawled along King William Road. An estimated 100,000 supporters crammed the route. Some had staked out their posse since early morning. Five goal maestro Darren Jarman has tasted the sweetness of a premiership before, but it was nothing like this. It was a bit quieter when I won a flag at Hawthorne, but this is just magnificent. Actually, the 98 pre-season was harder than 97 so I think that got rid of uh, the hangover as you'd say um, so we, we probably went to 98 fitter and uh, doing a lot of 5-1Ks which was very solid and um, yeah we come back raring to go. Five, it's to the right but a good mark is taken by Jarman just a couple of metres inside the behind line. Interesting angle. He's got a couple there, a couple of metres that is, and he's put it through. Last week, Jamison with three was the only multiple goal scorer out of a score sheet of ten goal scorers. James kicking towards full forward, Jarman first back, gets his third. Down to Rusciuto, Rusciuto inside the 50, Jakovic goes back, got one hand to the Eccles. Jarman, Jarman likes the situation, there's another one. Thought about going on, but then saw Bond, so chips in towards Ackermanis, that was dangerous, he couldn't take it. Smart fight, Jarman, everything going right for the Crows at the moment. Here goes the Rolls-Royce, look at that! Cruising for another one. Pittman lopes in towards the pocket, but almost caught him unawares. But again, it favours him, Lynch fell, scoops it up, Jarman, oh, nothing can go wrong for this side at the moment! Begins a hazard, loses it, regains it, chips short. Jarman is the man. Oh. He eludes one tackle. He does it magnificently well. And it's kicked another one. Free flowing game at the present time. James inside the 50. Up goes Jarman. Is he paid the mark? Yes, he is. And they're bringing the ball inside, and he's uh, getting plenty of touches. Jarman, 16 goals for this season. Kicks from right on the 50. It's hard. Kim Costa, forward of the wing, high kick, down towards Robren, big pack at the fall of the ball, Jarman, here's trouble for Melbourne, Jarman runs in and gets his second. 
Melbourne under siege in their defence. White, Karim does the roving of White. Let's go, a big talk for the square. Jarman in front, drops it down in front, has a second go, steps around. Thank you on the right. Rev, you're a champion. Jarman, you're not bad. In AFL, the tribunal heard five cases tonight. Darren Jarman first to face the music for striking Shane Wowoden in yesterday's Adelaide Melbourne game at Football Park. Jarman guilty and suspended for three games. Great mark to Sean Wren. Stood his ground, tucked the VC, gets the ball across the Costa. The Crows on the charge inside 50. Jarman's out in front. Great grab. That's where the space was for Jarman to run into. Didn't give the opportunity for Salmon to push back and plug the hole. That's the reason why this bloke on screen's got a chance to kick a goal. Well, it's a tough kick. The breeze is going across his body. Pulls out the wand to puff the smoke. Who was the go with the haircut today? Uh, I think that was um, that pre-season was very hot. And uh, we just went short hair. You know, because you get a lot of heat from your head. So we just went the short haircuts. Um, uh, it was a bit of fashion in them days. <laughs> Back to Costa if he can finish. Can't. Good tackle. Funnel again. Handball to Jarman. He should finish. And he did. Must need a goal there for the uh, Crows. Jarman tonight's got a sniff of it. You can tell that he thinks he's in for a big night. And Carroll's been able to hold him up. Sinclair unable to take him. Jarman will kick his third. Bang. Straight through the middle. Fourth like that. He kicks in towards centre half back. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. And has brought Peter Mann in broad daylight. Well, it's not daylight out, but look at this. This is an unbelievable umpiring decision. Jarman is absolutely irate. Whoops. He's going to get 50 metres. Not for the throwing of the ball, I would suggest, but more for the verbal barrage that he gave the umpire. Smart to Connell. Look at this. McLeod, this is dangerous. He's 80 metres out from goal. He keeps it low. Port had numbers, but the puck comes to the front. Big chance now of Jarman. 35 metres out. DJ gets it there. Don't be too bitter, however. I mean, they really are just... You can see the excitement in the crowd. Very high. Is it long enough? I was uh, in the same car as Malcolm and uh, we thought uh, uh, the Victorians would give us a bit of uh, lip so we thought we'd sit together and cop it all in one hit. I remember the year before the Saints supporters were giving me a hell and uh, so yeah it was he actually was sitting right down and I was taking all the all the baggings. It was quite funny. How does it feel to be in Melbourne for another grand final? Uh, fantastic. Great day too. Great turnout? Yeah, it's good so far, isn't it? Yeah. Any different to last year? I mean, is it uh, what, what you expected? It's a bit more blown and white around this year. <laughs> soak it all in, listen to the crowd, the crowd's going to be noisy and just focus on getting a touch early, I suppose it's one thing that you think about and um, yeah, it was just you know, enjoy the song and then get into it. Kept in play, however, well done by Jarman, he bends it back, and can do, and he kicks the goal. There's no doubt they kicked themselves out of it, they, they, they should have been eight goals in front I suppose and they were just all over us and... Um, I remember at half time Malcolm came in he said, oh, will he be this quiet this, this time again? In uh, 97, I think, he, he, um, I think he picked out someone and then sort of really give them a serve and uh, we were all shaking next to him, we could be next here and uh, uh, yeah, he, sorry, he sort of got the message across but one poor fella copped a lot. Who was it? I think it was Chad Brintle. 
<laughs> poor old Chatty, and uh, he copped a fair serve. She was there to provide a contest for the Crows, who did well. Here they go again. Kane Johnson lets one go. It's wrong. Barney! Super team. Archer's kick out, almost back to the centre. Kane Johnson almost throws it away. It matters not. Tyson has been sensational. Nigel Smart firing again. It's ticking away. We've done what we thought was impossible. We've been to Perth, to Melbourne, to Sydney, to Melbourne, and they've come back. For the Crows, there would be a night of celebration in Melbourne. It was on to the glass house. Yeah, it was a strange year, 99. Now they're winning it out of the middle. Kicks to half forward. Oh, the back from the yeah. by Jarman. Oh. The Rolls Royce has yeah. started the engine. The youngster, drafted last October, drives it to full forward, flips off the hands. Can it work through? Oh, Jarman breaks the tackle. Nobody on the goal line. The kick by Jarman. Oh, it is. Oh, bounces for a goal. Great start. Good little tap back there from Scott. Now a chance for Rusciuto, who took the, the mark of the year, maybe. Oh, good mark, Jarman. In the woods, Jarman again got the one hand to it. This time it wasn't enough. Normally it would have been, but it's a slippery ball. Jarman still going, trying to soccer it down. He's still going, Jarman. Now he's at the bottom. Now he's at the These are the goals they practice curls when they train on this ground. This is the pocket oh. they work on every night. Just do a nice little side step then. Yeah, good luck. You'll be right. Check side. Yep. Oh, look at that. Jarman has put the Crows back in front. Lip tack. On the run, the Crows. Can they pinch it in the last minute? Costa under the chest of Jarman. He plays on DJ. And he puts it in front. Jarman. Not a mark, but on the bounce. Maybe set this one down for another goal. Uh, Look at this! Look uh, at this! Uh, oh, uh, yes! Uh, yes! Uh, Top goal! To full forward. Jarm in front of the pack. It doesn't reach him. Get put the ball. Vardy Jarman! Everyone, including Mark Rusciuto, stopped. He has a second go and slots it in beautifully to Jarman. Malcolm Blight in football and playing and coaching is... Uh, 
is over. The battery's really running down and Malcolm Blight in football is, uh, is parting company. I really enjoyed Malcolm. He was um, very easy to get on with. He had some good uh, ideas skills-wise and he had some crazy ideas, but you know, he combined them both together and you know, to, to win back to back at the Crows, it was um, no doubt uh, he was an absolute genius. Adelaide could do no better than look to Blight's replacement at Geelong to take over as senior coach. Into the breach stepped five times Hawthorne Premiership star Gary Ayres. When I was at Hawthorne he was actually the captain, so it was I uh, knew Gary very well, so I was yeah, very happy that he got the job. He gets the hand pass out to Rusciuto. Rusciuto and Riccardi, interesting in the middle. Back to Jarman. He approaches the 50 on the run. That is perfection, DJ. It held up a little bit on the breeze, but I think it's home. Big pack of players. Curly went high. They need a crumb up on hands and knees. Credit hook. Squeeze the ball out, taken by Vardy. Finds a slim down Jarman from outside of 50. A bit of magic. He's got it! Birds had it and lost it. Marsh tries to find his teammate there, and Jarman does well. Rolls the shoulders <laughs> and kicks a goal! Magnificent play by Darren Jarman. His experience and his leadership qualities, and obviously having played a lot of his footy later years anyway in the forward line, to be able to consistently kick goals. And a lot of people don't realise that the Crows over the last two years have had an extremely inexperienced list. And really I was just looking for some leadership from Darren. That didn't mean that he had to have a title, but what it did do was for him to display those leadership qualities on the ground. And uh, he's been able to do that. Quickly going to the ground, got a hand pass away. Clark left it behind. Here's trouble for the Eagles. Jarman grabs, snaps, and I think he's got it. And Scott Cummings has booted 11. This is Shirley pulling it back towards the kickoff line. Lombra in the forward, forced to spoil, but coming through is Jarman runs into an open goal, and finally. He went out wide, Bickley in towards full forward, no mark taken, ball spills towards Collica. Look at this, this is classical football. Right down, say goodnight, and kick a goal down and Jarman! to every football caller, wherever you are in Australia, to watch that classical piece of play. To be able to get as much out of himself as he can, to be able to play in three day premierships, and certainly to be able to thrill the crowds as he has done over the years with his skill level, his uncanny knack of kicking a goal when it's needed, I think again speaks volumes for where Darren Jarman has been able to climb to, and that's to the top of the mountain. It's like sometimes a big mark, and it makes it very difficult for the Adelaide Crows to get some space. Oh, here. great smother, Jarman. Massey. Jarman, can he set it up? They've got no one. Great kick! Oh. It's kicked a goal! <laughs> <laughs> Ramiro, little hand pass over the top. Chance for Rowan Smith, kicks the ball back to the middle. Jarman will kick a goal, won't he? Tried to kick it a little bit too far. It's a goal anyway. Just see if a few mistakes will take place. Smart, applied the tackle. He applied it correctly according to the umpire. And that was pretty good work off the ground. Good hand, Stevens. Jarman using his skills to get through. He loads up the big torque. Just a little bit offline, but a good mark. Was it a push? No push. Couldn't quite take oh. it. Drag back over the line. Here's a chance for Laddams to set it up short. And Jarman's got it given that he kicks this. Well, he can bring it back to 25 points. Darren Jarman just ambles in straight through the centre. Oh. Yep. Finds Bickley. Again, Jarman's going to be the target. Could Maybe a bit of magic yeah. from Darren Jarman. 35 metres out, going for his third goal. And Rams at home. Matthew Robin with the ball just behind the wing. Kicks towards half for Jarman. He looks as though he's looming as a real threat for Brisbane. He'll go in from 50. He'll go in, Darren Jarman, and get his second goal. What a magnificent kick from 50 metres. It was unfortunate how the season finished off for the Crows. Uh, some say he might have went a year too long, but when you love the game and, and you've got that bloody passion, well, don't give it away too early. To Stingline, gets to 50. Up and under, it's a chance, no. Jarman's got it! Well, Clark, Kane Johnson getting involved, he's starting to get a few kicks, Jarman uses his body really well, he just gave Freeborn a little shove about 10 metres before the ball got there. That they'd love to get, there's his second. 
I reckon he had 48 touches in the game. And just an absolute star, Nathan Buckley. This bloke's not bad either, Darren Jarman. Good to be showing the ball then. And he nearly, if he went back and had a shot, he nearly kicked this. He's pumped it all the way, and it's a goal! Magnificent kick! That awkward kicking style to full forward. Stevens there. Rashudo. Still Rashudo. A chance for Jarman. A goal. He's got four. He's got four. Good one out of the centre. To centre half forward. Stevens nearly. Bassett up there. Gets a handball. Little kick by Shirley to full forward. Jarman's got it. Oh, he's having a run out tonight. He's turning the clock back. He's revisiting 1997 and 1998. Well, this to put LA within a point and to give Jarman five for the first half. His kicks for goal have all been from about 20 metres out. Careful as he does it, puts it home. We discussed it about probably three weeks before the end of the season and I just asked him to have a think about some things that actually I'd gone through as a player and to weigh everything up and I left the decision with, with Darren. And so it's one for the high flyers. Clark's a chance, he's in front, he's got a huge leap. Got his hands on the ball, Cox did well, Jarman has pounced on it. Danger for the Eagles and Jarman bangs it through. So McLeod was over the back, Goodwin gets it out to Rashudo. Rashudo's kick not bad to the goal square. Oh, Gehrig, that's not good play. Jarman's got a touch now, he's got a goal now. McLeod's oh, kick looks good, good off the boot for Robren at the back. Jarman, left foot, special, <laughs> very special. He's got six. Perry wants it long, he's got to hit the pack hard, the big fly, Saddington was with him, chance now, Rashudo sets it up, a goal coming up, Jarman's going to just canter in the goal, bangs it through. Pick Lee, no they can't, see it's got to be confusion, Hewitt gets it, bangs the full forward, Jarman! Oh, it's off the post. It's, it's a goal, Jarman's kicked the goal. I just wanted to retire on my terms and 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 I, I said if I ever feel like I'm not enjoying it, you know, mentally, I thought, well that was it. I'm fine physically but I was just gone, I just I've had enough and uh, and then we started winning again so I got the bug back but in the end uh, I thought I'd right, made the right decision in the end. Break down and uh, it was very emotional, and uh, I think John Reed helped me out there, and it was a very hard thing for me to do. Um, something I've been doing all my life, and to to say retirement was a very hard word to say. Jarman has got better as the game's gone on. Pushes forward. The Blues are in trouble here. The shootout to Jarman in the pocket. It'll bring the house. Oh. 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 O